I'm not usually one to brag, but I'm pretty good at holding my breath. You may have heard of pearl divers and how they can hold their breaths for a couple minutes. My all-time record puts that to shame. Yes, I have one time held, did not take a single breath for over nine months. Of course, I mean a little gratuitous here. As you may have guessed, I'm talking about the time I spent in the womb. And there's no air to fill my immature lungs anyway. The cardiovascular system is at times remarkable in its simple elegance of function. And uh, one place I think that exemplifies this is in the fetal circulation of the heart and lungs. Normally, all of the blood in our bodies must first be pumped by the heart into the lungs to be oxygenated, and then be pumped into the rest of our body to distribute that oxygen. In the fetus, as I alluded to a little bit ago, there is no oxygen in the lungs because you're living in the fluid of the amniotic sac. Oxygenated blood must instead come from the mother by way of the umbilical vein. The fetal body has a unique way of separating oxygenated blood from the mother from deoxygenated blood from the rest of the fetus to make sure that the most vital organs can grow during crucial stages of development. There are basically two streams of blood inside the fetal heart. Um, blood from the mother enters through the eustachian valve of the inferior vena cava and goes across the heart and through a little flap uh, between the atria called the foramen ovale. Um, this well oxygenated or relatively well oxygenated blood can then be pumped like in an adult uh, going from the left heart uh, up through the aorta and into the carotids primarily where it can go to the oxygen hungry developing brain. This blood also bypasses the lungs which as you remember are not inflated and won't, would only serve to remove oxygen from the blood. The other stream is oxygen poor and it comes from the rest of the body to the superior vena cava and heads down into the right side of the heart. Normally, this would then go to the, uh, to the lungs to become oxygenated, but remember that the lungs don't function yet. Instead, the blood goes through the ductus arteriosus as it leaves the right heart, and this is a structure that closes after birth, um, but funnels the blood into the aorta after the vessels that are going to the carotids. Um, this steers the oxygen poor blood away from the head and it puts it into the umbilical artery to be returned to the mother for reoxygenization. A major factor in the shunting has to do with the very high resistance of the vessels of the lungs. In the fetus, the lungs provide a huge barrier to blood flow, which means that most of the blood that enters the pulmonary trunk will be diverted through the ductus arteriosus, a good thing. Uh, for retaining oxygen. However, at birth, when taking that first breath, the pulmonary vascular resistance is going to plummet, and all of the circulating blood will be diverted to the normal pattern of entering the lungs before going to the systemic circulation. This seems paradoxical a bit, because normally oxygen is a potent vasoconstrictor. Vessels that have a high oxygen tension will constrict as if saying, I'm fine here, go oxygenate someone else. In the fetus, however, the lung vascular expansion is in part due to the mecha mechanical strain of inhalation blowing up the lungs, but also due to vasodilation maintained uh, or mediated by oxygen. It's thought that this is in fact a uh, d due to oxygen sensitive potassium channels. Basically, fetal pulmonary vasoconstriction may be mediated by inhibiting calcium-sensitive potassium channels. Likewise, the ductus arteriosus is kept open by circulating prostaglandin E2, generated due to the relatively hypoxic or low oxygen state. When the newborn begins breathing on its own, these effects will stop so long as it isn't premature or there's another problem and the ductus will close. That big shift in blood flow will normally mean the end of the fetal circulation. A large return of blood from the lungs will 
cause increased atrial, left atrial pressure, which will close the foramen about. Um, and the ductus arteriosus, in the presence of a high amount of oxygen, will constrict into a ligament. The end result being that the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs, this gets oxygenated, and that reoxygenated blood is returned to the left side of the heart, which will pump it to the rest of the body. So, given that I had a pretty impressive bypass track to uh, leach oxygen from my mom, perhaps I was cheating a little when I held my breath all that time in the womb. Nonetheless, with such an elegant fetal circulation, I remain impressed.